Item number, SCP-2191, Object Class, Keter, formerly Euclid. Special Containment Procedures The Foundation is to maintain surveillance operations, but is otherwise not to directly interfere with SCP-2191 or the ritual practices of communities within the vicinity of the Hoya Forest. Exploration of SCP-2191 is prohibited outside of remotely controlled drones. Foundation operatives are to maintain the facade of forest rangers in the employ of the Romanian government. In the event of a SCP-2191 security breach by civilians or hostile entities, lethal force is authorized. Description SCP-2191 is a temple complex located within the dense Hoya forest of Romania. The first two floors of the structure hold a close resemblance to Eastern Orthodox monasteries commonly found in the region. This is suspected to have been a deliberate effort to disguise the true nature of SCP-2191. Thracian and Dacian architecture have both been discovered in the lower levels of the temple complex, and artifacts belonging to the Cucutini Tripilian culture have been recovered from the system of tunnels that makes up the lowest known portion of SCP-2191. The caverns of SCP-2191 are not thought to have formed naturally and were likely constructed around 4,800 to 3,000 BC. SCP-2191 is inhabited by a population of organisms classified as SCP-2191-1. Instances of SCP-2191-1 are considered genetically human but have undergone several significant seemingly fatal mutations. SCP-2191-1 lack all major internal organs, with the exception of the lungs, heart, and brainstem. The outer epidermis lacks pigmentation and displays a condition resembling cracked porcelain, possibly related to Harlequin syndrome. Entities appear androgynous, lacking or having somehow removed secondary sex characteristics. Their regressed eyes are covered by a layer of skin, rendering them mostly blind, but still able to react to light, universally displaying aversion to wavelengths greater than 100 nanometers. Further deviations from baseline Homo sapiens include especially flat, upturned noses and funnel-shaped ears, both considered related to their dependency on olfactory and auditory perception. SCP-2191-1 do not appear to communicate via language, the only sound produced being a persistent clicking of the tongue, speculated to be a form of echolocation. SCP-2191-1 do not readily appear to undergo senescence and have not aged since containment. Further analysis has revealed an abnormally slow metabolism. SCP-2191-1 instances are not believed to be biologically immortal, but have a significantly decreased rate of necrosis. SCP-2191-2 refers to a collective of vermiform organisms. These organisms vary in size, form, and purpose, and are accordingly classified as SCP-2191-2A, SCP-2191-2B, and SCP-2191-2C. Genetic analysis of SCP-2191-2 show close relation with fellow subgroups, their most recent common ancestors being Homo sapiens. It has been speculated that SCP-2191-2 did not naturally evolve on their own, but their true origin remains unknown. SCP-2191-2-A superficially resemble Petromyzontiformes, lamprey, but whose internal structure more closely resemble Hirudinea, leeches. Each SCP-2191-1 has a SCP-2191-2-A instance within their abdomen primarily located where the stomach and large and small intestines would exist. SCP-2191-2b are an infestation of vermiform organisms that live throughout the hollow walls of SCP-2191. SCP-2191 appears to have been constructed with a system of channels through which SCP-2191-2b travel. These thin, long organisms will enter SCP-2191-1 orifices, primarily via the mouth or rectum, but do not appear to cause harm or discomfort to their hosts. SCP-2191-2b 
are believed to redistribute nutrients throughout SCP-2191, extracted from any SCP-2191-1, which have recently fed. SCP-2191-2C, like SCP-2191-2B, inhabit the interior architecture of SCP-2191. These tendril-like appendages are composed primarily of neurons and attached to SCP-2191-1 at the base of the spine while inactive. Only when attached to SCP-2191-2C do SCP-2191-1 display behavior resembling that of a sapient organism, including posturing suggestive of prayer. SCP-2191-1 are considered inactive while connected to SCP-2191-2C. During an active state, SCP-2191-1 entities will leave SCP-2191 and aggressively hunt for living humans, ignoring non-human animals and deceased individuals. Active states do not occur simultaneously among SCP-2191-1, although an active state will always occur between dusk and dawn, nor do they hunt as a pack, choosing to spread throughout the forest. A paralytic agent is employed to disable their prey, injected via venom-delivering barbs located in the lower carpals of both hands. When prey have been successfully incapacitated, SCP-2191-1 will open its mouth and widen its throat, unhinging its jaw in the process. SCP-2191-2A will then emerge from SCP-2191-1's interior cavity, initiating the feeding process by latching to the victim's neck via a toothed, funnel-like sucking mouth. SCP-2191-2A will first inject the body with digestive enzymes, liquidizing organ, muscle, and bone alike, before consuming the resultant fluids. The process can last anywhere from 20 to 50 minutes, depending on the size of its prey. Although known to those living in the vicinity of the Hoya Forest, SCP-2191 was not recognized by the Foundation as an anomaly until August 1916, after the unexplained disappearance of 244 members of the Austro-Hungarian First Army during the Battle of Transylvania. Due to the First World War, Operations to contain the threat did not begin until early 1919. Without a source of food, SCP-2191-1 entities appeared to enter a dormant state as of December 1924. Several incidents occurring between 1932 and 1977 would result in the discovery of SCP-2191-3. List of Known Incidents the 26th of September, 1932. Greece. The Yerisos earthquake devastates the Chalkidiki Peninsula and results in 491 reported casualties. 126 individuals were unaccounted for, but the event was ultimately deemed non-anomalous. A connection to SCP-2191 established years later. December 26, 1939. Turkey. The Erzincan earthquake results in the deaths of approximately 33,000 people. Locals report a great serpent rising from the ground at the onset of the earthquake. The Foundation begins to investigate the region. November 10, 1940. Romania. An earthquake strikes Vrancia. Casualties are low. Civilians report vampire attacks in wake of the disaster. Media outlets publicly dismissing the claim as superstition. March 18, 1953, Turkey. The Yenice Gonan earthquake causes widespread damage, killing over 1,000 people. Several survivors report seeing the arm of an octopus rupture from the earth. Civilians report pale men attacking survivors in the night, reports ceasing after approximately one month after the disaster. July 26, 1963, Macedonia. The Skopje earthquake kills over 1,000 people and renders 200,000 homeless. Approximately 500 would go missing in wake of the disaster. Reports of pale men in the night are common. March 4, 1977, Romania. The Vrancia earthquake kills over 1,500. However, only 800 bodies are accounted for. Reports of pale men and tendrils pulling victims beneath the ground. 
panic spreads throughout the region. Foundation operatives are able to confirm a connection to SCP-2191. Description of SCP-2191-3 SCP-2191-3 is an organism whose core is located deep beneath SCP-2191. Its true size has proven difficult, if not entirely impossible to measure, but root-like appendages extend throughout an area of approximately 660,000 square kilometers. SCP-2191-3 secretes a highly corrosive substance, which is employed in the creation of tunnels throughout the Balkan Peninsula. SCP-2191-3 is sapient and exerts control over SCP-2191-1 and SCP-2191-2 organisms via physical interaction with SCP-2191-2C1 and through the release of complex pheromones. SCP-2191-1 entities, through the use of SCP-2191-2A and SCP-2191-2B, act as feeder drones for SCP-2191-3. It has since been discovered that civilians, native to several isolated villages in vicinity of Hoya Forest, have actively provided human sacrifices to SCP-2191 as a means of minimizing seismic activity. Interview with Draga Negrescu in 1977 Interviewed Draga Negrescu Interviewer Dr. Judith Lowe Forward Draga Negrescu is a village elder and midwife, 96 years of age, from Redacted. She has proven knowledgeable with regards to the folklore and traditions associated with SCP-2191 and claims to be a descendant of the Solomonari. Interview conducted in Daco, Romanian. Playing log now. What can you tell me about the temple? It is where the mother resides. Like a queen, she sends her faithful bees to collect nectar. Like good beekeepers, we help the hive flourish. As you now know, it is best for all that we be allowed to continue our sacred duty. Who is the mother? The mother was once a princess, the most beautiful daughter of the Blood Empress. The great Carcist, sorcerer king of Aditum, sought to conquer her as he did the domain of the Blood Empress. He claimed her, as was his right, and she became his favoured concubine. In time, she came to worship the great Carcist, just as we who hold to the old ways do. She begged to bear his children, and the great Carcist blessed her with his sacred seed. The mother swelled with joy and life. Here she was planted and here she grew. We, like the pale ones, must keep her fat and satisfied. The pale spew the nectar into her many mouths and her brood suckle upon her teats and grow strong. The mother and the land are now one. Her earthen womb swells and soon she will rupture. All around you is tinder for the gods. End log. Statement from the O5 Council There are some who wish to believe that the Foundation has never, nor will ever, cater to the designs and desires of an anomalous entity. Foundation efforts to contain SCP-2191 are now thought to have inadvertently led to the deaths of approximately 40,000 over 45 years. The obvious choice would be to neutralize the threat. And we've tried. The number of civilian and Foundation casualties being well beyond acceptable numbers. In order to contain the larger threat, we must allow it to feed. We are aware of the offense caused by this procedure. This is not the first time, nor will it be the last, that the Foundation has been forced to commit a lesser evil in prevention of a greater. We do believe that in the end, our current method is the most preferable, with regards to both ethics and efficiency. We are fully aware that every sacrifice feeds SCP-2191-3, allowing it and its brood to thrive. But we are not about to sacrifice the entire Balkan Peninsula to neutralize that threat. Not yet.